Welcome. Today we're going to be doing sleepy yoga. So I hope you guys brought your pillows. What we're going to be doing today for our Designs for Zen prop workshop is using pillows as aids in yoga. So to get started today, first of all, welcome. I'm so happy to see you all here for our Designs for Zen. I've got our playlist down here and I also posted it in chat. So get that set and get your pillows. Today we had the opportunity to use a full-size body pillow if you have them. If you have fat pillows, small pillows, throw pillows, anything fluffy, even thick blankets. And if you are in our block workshop and have blocks or a paper towel roll, you can use that too. So go grab your props, get your water, and get your pillows, and then find a nice cozy spot to get started. The playlist is really fun, nostalgic Pokemon. If you were with me last week, we did our, our really extra nostalgic <laughs> Neopets. And that was, uh, that was two weeks ago. And then last week we did Punk Rarity. So every week is a different costume here when you're with Riffwing Designs, but that's what's so fun about it. So as you can see today, I've got my Snorlax. I made him this morning because one of the challenges that I like doing here is making a closet costume. Now this one I just had the fabric for and you can see the how-to in my Instagram story. So check you there. But for now, let's get going because it is already 12.05. To get started, we're gonna do our snoozy, snoozy layout. So if you're with our blocks workshop again, which is available on YouTube, we're gonna have two blocks or else multiple pillows. If you have two blocks, you'll have a tall one and a medium one and you make like a ramp or if you have so to do is you put pillows on top of it and make like a little little lounge chair so you could also do that with multiple pillows kind of fold them over and make it into a recliner like that okay so find a way to make yourself a recliner you might even use sofa cushions there's no rules in this one. So make yourself a little bed and then go to sleep. Find a nice, cozy, relaxed position. What we'll be doing in pillow yoga today is called restorative. It's very slow, very snoozy, just like all that turkey that's in your belly. I'm sure you had some leftovers for lunch, right? So find yourself a comfortable position. Your feet can be wide, your arms can be on your belly or across or open. And I'm going to be just narrating for you. So I'm not gonna be sitting down here, but get yourself nice and cozy for today's restorative session. This is on relaxation, drawing on the core of yoga. First, notice your breath. With your eyes closed, if your hands are on your belly, notice how it feels. Just notice the speed, if it's shallow or deep. Notice if your breath is cool, or maybe it's warm. And then begin to deepen your breath. Each inhale, bringing in fresh, healing air. Each exhale, releasing any negativity, stress, tightness, sadness. Each exhale, let those feelings go. With each inhale, draw in, again, fresh, healing air. If you'd like, you can go into an even count, inhaling and exhaling in and out, in 
and out. In and out. Continue at your own pace. Couple more breaths. And then begin to return to a normal breath. Begin to think about your intention for the day. As we go through this restorative yoga, what is it that you would like to do? What is it that you need to focus on for healing and relaxation? What is it that you need to think about today to bring peace? If you can't think of one, just use relaxation. And this time we're going to open with our breath to seal it in, but you'll stay laying down. So think of your intention and inhale deeply and let it go. And then inhale deeply and exhale to seal. Begin to roll your ankles and wrists, just like waking up from Savasana. And maybe move your fingers and toes. Maybe do a really big stretch. And then yawn. Get ready for some slow motion yoga. To start with, I actually really like the feeling with our arms above our head. So on an exhale, you're lowering your hands, keeping them parallel and just bring them both down in front of you. So your fingers brush your hips and then inhale up, reaching back so your hands go above your head. Again, only to what's comfortable for you, your shoulders. Exhale down, keeping your arms moving at the same pace. Inhale, lift them up above your head and go at your own speed, doing this a few times. Again, maybe adjusting your blocks if you need to. Inhale up. Exhale down. Good. Keeping your hands down this time, plant your palms down. And this time, bring your legs more closer together. You can either place one foot on the floor or just press with your heel. And we're going to lift the opposite leg, just pressing with your shoulders and your neck and your head and trying to lift one leg, keeping it straight, maybe flexing the toes. Just feel how far your body can go today. If you need to bend your knee, go for it. If you have a strap, you can always use a strap. Our strap workshop's also up on YouTube. Now notice I can't get straight. <laughs> I'm also on a ramp. So only do what's comfortable for you. And hold it there. Breathe into it. And then bend your knee slightly, and we're going to go into a side twist from here. So allow that knee to cross over, keeping your shoulders flat here. If it's comfortable, again, you're doing the side twist, modified on the ramp with your hands down. Maybe it's better or maybe it's worse. If it's worse, find something that works for you. Remember, no pain in designs for Zen Yoga. And then on an inhale, unwind yourself. Keep your knee bent here. So you've got a 90 degree angle with your foot. And then push it out. So you're stretching your legs just by pushing, like you're pumping the brakes. So inhale in, exhale, push it out. A mm, couple times. And if you like, you're allowed. You can do anything you want in yoga, remember? Maybe you need to hug your knee in for a little bit. That's fine. Or maybe you just want to keep flexing your foot. Maybe you need to do an opposite twist and open up. Again, do what works for you. And once you're done, extend again, flexing that foot. Then point the toe and then lower it down. Take a breath here and just notice how different your hip and your legs feel. And we're going to go do the other foot. So if you had your... Opposite foot stabilizing if you're pressing down with your heel. Inhale and slowly lift the opposite leg. 
keep it straight, maybe flex and point through the toe, or maybe you need to pull the toes in. Again, pointing the toe for me is a little easier for me to lift. You don't have to keep it totally straight. Invite a bend in the knee. Just find how far your body can go today. <sighs> Breathe into it. I swear this is going to be the hardest part of the whole practice. And then bend your knee. Pause and twist the opposite direction. So your knee is crossing your chest and then coming over. Keep your shoulders flat, palms down, and just notice where your body wants to twist here. We're going to be doing quite a few laying twists. So this is warming us up. One more breath here. And then inhale, lift it back up again. This time keeping that leg 90 degrees and then exhale, press. Inhale, draw it in. Exhale, press. Inhale, draw it in. At your own pace. And again, if you need to do any other movements, any other twists, if you want to draw that knee in and give it a hug, if you need to twist your ankles, do what works for you. And then keeping the foot flex, slowly lower your legs down. Now that we've started to warm up our hips, we're going to go into a diamond pose. So you may need to adjust, like I've got quite a bit of cushion poof under me, but you're going to be putting your toes together and making a diamond with your feet while you're prone. So just get comfortable, bring your feet together. If you have a strap, again, you can use a strap to tie them together again, from our strap workshop. If you need to, you can put pillows or blocks underneath your knees for extra stability. See how everything is finally coming together? So your feet are together, knees spread wide, hips open, and I've got my blocks under my knees, my pillow underneath me, and find wherever you want your arms and hands to be. It can be in your belly, it can be open. And we're gonna be in this position for three minutes. So make sure your music is playing. Make sure you're nice and cozy. And we're just going to relax. If your thoughts drift, which they might happen a lot in this yoga practice, bring them back, noticing what they are, acknowledging those thoughts, and then let them drift away like a leaf on the water surface of a river just floating downstream. And if you need, you can always bring your thoughts back to your intention. Or maybe try and meditate just by focusing on what you hear and feel. Your mind doesn't have to be empty when you meditate. You just have to listen and notice. So do that now, and I'll come back to you in two minutes.
Begin to deepen your breath. Start to get comfortable. We are going to be moving again, so maybe take any stretches that you need. Deepen your breaths. Notice how you're feeling. Thank you for stopping by. Again, do what you need to. And for those of you that are coming up out of your ramp, what we're going to do is just move the pillows over and then give them a big snuggle. So take your ramp down. And if you need one or two pillows, again, a body pillow is great for this, but what you want to do is take your pillow and have like a couple just in front of you. And it's kind of, I'll do it at an angle so you can see what I'm doing here. So we're going to be going from our butterfly pose and our queen's pose down into a side twist. Sorry about that. Oof. Okay, so here we go. I am kind of siding up to the pillow and then laying back. So I'm kind of leaning on my arm. Then you put the pillow between your legs and you can have the option, if you have only one small pillow, obviously, just put a pillow between your legs and maybe put a pillow by your head. What you wanna do is just pretty much lay on your side here. We're gonna start with this and then we're gonna open up into a twist. So again, you might need blankets underneath your hips. <laughs> But the idea here is to just stack them in a way that you can get a nice little, just a body pillow snug. We're going to be here for just a minute. Again, noticing your thoughts. Finding relaxation in this pose. Five more breaths. And then what we're going to do, again, you might have to adjust, is you're going to keep your legs where they are and open up your chest. So you're twisting, but you're twisting from the top of your back. For me, I have a pillow under me, and it actually feels great. Um, let me try it without a pillow. Without a pillow works too. But all you're doing is turning open, peeling your chest open, plant those shoulders down, keep your legs twisted, and stay here. And if this feels familiar to you, it's a modified version of what we normally do, where you lift your knees to your chest and then drop your knees to one side. In this way, we started with the knees to the side and then twisted the up portion of the back. So again, find where your hands need to be. They can be above your head, they can be down, they can be on your belly. With the pillows, it might be a little weird. I've kind of got like a, like a walk like an Egyptian going on here. And then breathe into it. And again, we'll spend a couple minutes here. Find ease. Maybe think about your intention or your breath. Or just be mindful of what's around and how you feel right now. Maybe, if you can, try and nod your head from side to side, doing a little bit of yes, no. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the other side. So whatever way works for you, uh, come on over. 
flip everything over. Remember what side you were just on. And then we're going to switch to the other hip. Starting off. Again, kind of saddling up to the pillow. And then leaning on your arm. Putting one pillow between your knees. Maybe one underneath, too. Let's try that. Oh, this is cool. Okay. Again, there's no wrong way to do this. <laughs> and then just give your pillow or pillows a big snuggle. And we're going to be here for a minute. As you're ready, we're going to open up. So again, you're taking and peeling your chest open, keeping those knees and hips down as much as you can. Again, put more pillows underneath your shoulders, which is what I'm going to do, <laughs> or under your knees. Keep the shoulder blades down. Invite that twist into your back, and then find where your arms need to be. No pain. It's supposed to be relaxing. And once you find that, settle in, and we're going to be here for two minutes. And again, maybe here you start to rock your head back and forth, feeling how different this side feels. And as you're ready, we're going to actually come up. Oof. <laughs> Guys, this is so fun. Now, normally in a restorative class, this will go for 90 minutes. We only have another 30 to go, so... I'll give you about four or five more poses, but remember, I can always do more, especially if you invite me to events that you're interested in. So from here, we're gonna go into an assisted child's pose. Child's pose is where you're on your mat. You may want a blanket or a towel underneath. Again, we did blanket yoga together before. Put that blanket underneath your knees to give you a little bit of extra padding. I'm using a very flat pillow. Your toes come in together, and so you're pretty much just sitting back on your toes first in this type. I'm going to use the body pillow, but a fat pillow, or even if you put a couple blocks and then put the pillow on top. What you're doing is you're putting this fat pillow up in between, and then you lean over and do your child's pose from here. Now your hands and your chest can go flat. Or maybe you want to put another pillow for your head or a block for your head. Again, if there was something from block yoga that you enjoyed, you can do that here. So it would be like this. And your hands can be out. Your hands can come behind. Wherever's comfortable for you. And we are gonna spend a couple minutes here as well. So find a cozy <laughs> position for your pillow. We'll do it with this one, your pillow. Child's pose. Ready? And then get nice and cozy and just breathe into it. Thank you. 
I noticed my knees were off the floor and they do need cushioning. So again, just when you need to, there's nothing wrong with that. start to feel your body here obviously mine had a little more adjustments to do feel how yours is if you'd like here you have the option to pull those pillows out and to go into a little cat cow just a little movement if you need it in your spine or if you want to go into a down dog here maybe one flow just slow motion don't do anything fast but just notice how your body feels. If you want to, no pressure. Just kind of giving your body a little hello and saying, okay. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go into a couple of seated folds using our pillows. Very similar to block yoga. You can be seated on the pillow. You can have one in front of you. That's why we have all kinds of props here. So take your pillow and you can use it for your arms or you can use multiple ones for your head. And then you just do a one-legged forward fold. So I've got one foot in, one foot out. And then you just fold over it. Keep your spine straight when you fold and then invite that bend. And we'll be here for a minute. So you really want your head to relax. Relax your neck. Allow the stretch to originate in your leg and in your back. Focus on your breathing. And then as you're ready, you can start to come back up. 
I'm going to go to the other side. So maybe straighten both legs out first. Just feel how it is neutral and then draw that other knee in, foot in, and then put your pillows back down. So you'll notice the pillows allow a little bit more flexi flexibility, I guess is a pun, uh, instead of blocks. Like you can't put a block on your thigh or your leg, but here it allows you just a little more. So when you're folding over again, straighten your spine first, go forward, and then invite the bend. Finding what works on this side, and then breathe. We'll be here for another minute. And then slowly come back up, put your pillows to the side, straighten out your legs, and feel where it is. We're coming into staff pose where your legs are straight, knees pulled up, toes lifted. Fingers point forward, place your hands down and roll those shoulders back. Breathe here. I'm going to be here for a few breaths. Just feel your posture. <laughs> Pull those shoulders back and down. And then we're gonna roll over back onto our belly. So again, if you wanna have a blanket or a towel underneath to help cushion those hip bones, feel free. What we're gonna be doing is going into either Sphinx or Seal. I will show you both. So you'll have a pillow, pretty poofy pillow. Well, again, <laughs> you don't know until you try it, right? So what we're doing here is coming down onto your belly. And then you're going to roll the pillow underneath you to hold your chest up a little bit. So for Sphinx, your forearms are flat and your chest is lifted. The backs of your toes are down and you look forward or slightly down with a neutral neck. And you can hold this or you can go into seal. Seal, if you, you want to try this, this is the best time with a pillow. In seal, you have your hands down and then you lift and straighten your arms. So it can cause a little back pain. You don't want the bend in your lower back. You want the bend in your upper chest. And lifting your arms but keeping the pillow can hold you and reduce the weight in your lower back. So seal has straight arms. Sphinx has forearms down. Whichever one you choose will be here for one minute. Remember to breathe. Shoulders back. Come to your breath. Remember, no pain. Feel free to adjust. Or you can go back to child's pose if this doesn't work for you. Few more breaths. And we're going to lower ourselves flat to the ground. So again, remove any pillows. Going to go into crocodile. So crocodile, your forearms are in front of you. 
the stacked, and you rest your head on your forearms. That's it. Your head can be facing straight down or to one side. And just feel your body here. Notice where it touches the ground. I guess you could put your head on a pillow instead of your forearms, right? You just want to be able to breathe. Notice how your back feels after doing that deep, deep, deep twist. And then lifting to a back bend. Notice how your ribs expand as you're breathing here. The movement of your body with each breath. This is nice, isn't it? And again, you can stay here as long as you need. If you're with me, we're going to go up again. This is another option to do a little flow if you want to push up and do a little bit of movement with your body. We're going to go into another one of my favorites, the Pigeon or Sleeping Swan. So normally you can do it from down dog or you can do it from on all fours. What we're gonna do with swan or half resting half pigeon is you're taking your foot back. Again, maybe you wanna stay here for just a moment, feel how it feels, right? We did this earlier laying down. So then you draw your knee in. And the idea is that, <laughs> and look at me, I'm moving around. So you want your forward leg shin is facing out or bent because mine doesn't do that and your back leg you kind of shimmy out but generally if your hips aren't touching you would put a block below so let's put a pillow below and then for a resting half pigeon or sleeping swan from here you have a nice straight back and again if this doesn't work for you you can bend and you can go into deer deer is with both knees bent like a pinwheel so see here that's deer. If you can't do this, again, find your yoga. But for me, I've got my one leg extended, knee bent. And again, I am not parallel. My, my leg's like this because I can't, I can't do that. But I know that. Pillow underneath, and then you're going to fold down over the pillow. Very similar to what we did in child's pose. So you're keeping your hips level, and this is giving you a little less weight on those ankles. And, and you can put your hands in front of you. And just relax your head on another pillow or a block or your forearms. We'll be in this one for two minutes. If your mind strays, come back to your breath. Five more breaths here. And 
as you're ready, slowly start to work your way up. <laughs> Adjusting your pillows as you need to. So from here, I'm just coming back in and I'm lifting up with my forearms and feeling the difference with how that was. Now you have two options to get out of this. You can drop that hip that's on the same side as your bent knee and do a little it's like a break dance. So you're shifting to your other hip. Voila. So we've kind of flopped into deer. And then you can extend that knee and find your way. Or if you want, again, you can kick back, go through a flow, find your dog, stretch out those legs. Wherever you are, what you're going to be doing, and I'm just going to switch sides so you can see easier, is that other foot is coming forward. Again, knee towards your wrist shimmying back that back leg or going into deer legs oh look my hip is up <laughs> as i pat my bottom you guys and then you lower that down plant your pillow in front of you straight back feel the stretch and then lower into it Whoop. <laughs> there we go all right and then we'll be here for a couple minutes as well. So just find your place. Again, no pain, just as you need to. Come back to the breath. Five more breaths on this side. Make it count. And again, as you're ready, move your props to the side. We've got two more poses before Savasana, everybody. So maybe you do that little break dance and shift around. What we're going to be coming into next is fish. So you're going to end up on your back. But again, if you want to do one last flow, now's the chance to kind of get that body going. And then again, we're all going to meet on our backs. We're going to have probably either a block or fat pillow. We're going to go into fish. Fish is a fun one, but you almost always need props to get the most out of the pose. Not to do it right. People can do it right without it if you're really flexible, but to get the most out of it, I like to use a block or pillows. So fish is, you're kind of lowering yourself down and this goes underneath your shoulders. So your shoulder blades are laying on it somehow and maybe you need something else under your back i'm gonna try and adjust it so it's under my back and on my block again there's no wrong way if it's comfortable so i'm lowering down onto this block <laughs> the block is sliding <laughs> there we go okay so i've got a little little ramp underneath my shoulders then carefully and gently plant your hands down elbows should be about at your shoulders and you're lowering your neck and going into a back bend. If this is not comfortable, put a pillow under your head. But if you can let your neck go, it's going to be dangling or a true fish. Your head, the top of your head is touching the ground. So I just touched the ground there. So you might have to adjust the height of your pillow. 
Oh, this is fish. It's a subtle or maybe an intense back bend. Again, no pain. You don't want any pain in your neck or in your back. But if you can, use your arms to press down. Put the weight in your head and just breathe here. And again, feel free to stop at any time if there's any pain. In fish, there's a cleansing breath. You inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. We'll do three. Inhale. Exhale. Let that tongue go. Open the mouth. Inhale. Exhale through the mouth. One more time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Good. Few steady breaths. And now take your time. Maybe roll out of it. Find your way carefully without damaging your neck <laughs> to come out of fish. Maybe you pull those blocks out and flop onto your back. The last actual pose we're going into is legs up the wall. If you have an open wall, it could be legs onto a chair. If you have a chair or a couch or a bed nearby, or you can just pile up a whole bunch of pillows like this and do legs on the pillows. <laughs> Making our pillow fort here, right? So all we're doing for legs up the wall is you scooch up to it on the side and then you rotate. So if this is a chair, notice how my legs are like a 90 degree angle. That's what you want. And then you lower down. <sighs> This is probably good with the uh, couch cushions too, right? So all you're doing is you're just laying here with your feet up. They can be bent or they can be straight. If you have a strap, you can use a strap. Or if you have a wall like me, we just scooch over to it. Adjust. <laughs> and then put your legs on the wall. So if you have the wall, your feet can be flat like you're holding a tray. You can plant your feet on the wall, or you could even do a diamond like we did before. Find what works for you. We're going to be here for three minutes. This is great for reversing blood flow and helping, helping with relaxation. Place your arms wherever is comfortable. T with palms up, or maybe palms down. Maybe your hands come above your head in a diamond. Maybe they're on your belly. Wherever you are, come to stillness. in your legs up the wall. In your last active pose, find your intention. Bring relaxation and restoration. Maybe you go back to those deep breaths in and out. Find what you need to end your practice. And if it's not this pose, do what works for you. And I'll call us all back together in two minutes.
One more minute. Make any adjustments if you need. Stay in the moment. Stay with your breath. And you can stay here for Savasana if that's what you'd like. Or if you're with me, find a way back to the ground safely. We're going to be coming into Savasana, our final resting pose. We can go back to our queen's ramp, which I really enjoy. Or you can go flat on the ground. You may want a blanket because we've been very still. Or if you want to use straps or blocks from any of my previous aid workshops, now is the time to use that knowledge. Build yourself your favorite shavasana. And this one's going to be extra long. So build your nice little ramp. And find your way to your peaceful resting pose. We'll be here for almost five minutes. So make sure you've got your cozy blanket and your calming music. And I will see you on the other side. Gently 
begin to deepen your breath. <sighs> Maybe introduce movement into your ankles and wrists. And if you need to stay here, stay here as long as you need. If you're with me, maybe start to move your head and arms. And find your way into a full body stretch. Really thank your body. Oof. That was oh, almost a nap, wasn't it? Or maybe it was. And if it was, that's great. We are going to come up to seated if that's comfortable for you. So again, minding your props, come to one side and just stay on that for a little second. A couple breaths. Honoring the in-between before we go from this restful, restorative, snoozy, Snorlax, Pokemon yoga. <laughs> and go to the rest of our weekend. While we're here, think about your intention. Decide if that will serve you for the rest of the day, or if you'd like, you can set a new intention now. And as you're ready, you can come up to seated, keeping your eyes closed, or maybe invite a gentle gaze. Notice how your body feels after all of that. Roll their shoulders back and down. Maybe do a couple neck rolls. Any last movements you need to get comfortable in your seat. And then we're going to breathe. And this time we will seal our practice with two breaths. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, draw hands to heart center. Thinking of your intention you'd like to set for the rest of your day. Deep inhale. Exhale, let everything go. And then draw your thumb knuckles up to your forehead, your center of knowledge and intuition. And the light and love in me is going to honor and thank the light and love in all of you. I wish you continued peace as you go through the rest of your weekend. And thank you so much for practicing with me. Namaste. Again, thank you. This has been Riftwing Designs, our pillow workshop. We have but one workshop to go. It is wall yoga. But first, next week is TrotCon, and it's going to be an early morning tree hugger yoga. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of you then if you want to start your day off right. And if not, again, we do post the workshops to YouTube. Tree Hugger may be the property of TrotCon, so if you want to see it, you'll have to join me then. And with that, I will wish you the best for the rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for being here today. Take care. <laughs>